Here next is about uh, difference between pre-tension and post-tensioning pre-stress concrete. Let me show you one video about it. Pre-stressed concrete. In case of big concrete construction projects like bridges, steel reinforcement bars alone won't be sufficient to provide the necessary tensile strength. In this case, pre-stressed concrete is being used. In pre-stressing, the rods or tendons are stretched along the axis and cement is poured. Later when the tendons are released the compression is generated at the bottom which tries to counterbalance the compression due to loading at the top part of the beam. The principle behind pre-stressed concrete is that compressive stresses induced by the high strength steel tendons in a concrete member before loads are applied. This will balance the stresses imposed in the member during the service. Pre-stressed concrete can be used for the construction of roofs floors, walls, and bridges with longer unsupported spans. Pre-stressing is generally done by two methods, pre-tensioned concrete and post-tensioned concrete. Pre-tensioned concrete. Pre-tensioned concrete is those in which the tendons are tensioned before pouring of concrete. The tendons are initially tensioned and anchored at both ends and then concrete is poured over it and cured. When the concrete attains desired strength, the tendons are released and projections are cut out. The pre-stress imparts into beam through bond action. Post-tensioned concrete. In post-tensioned concrete, the tendons are tensions after the concrete is poured. Initially, the concrete is cast around the sheathing. The ducts are formed in concrete in which tendons are placed. After the concrete is hardened, the tendons are tensioned by hydraulic jacks and anchored. In case of bonded type tendons, the duct is grouted with sufficient slurry. In the unbounded type of tendons, grouting is not necessary. We will learn about this later. Thank you for watching. See by looking at this video, you understood the difference between pre-tension and post-tension and uh, you understood about bounded tendons and unbounded tendons. Um, one more video is there. Sadr Bridge is located in the center of Tehran. The total length of main bridge is 6 kilometers. With double amplitude lanes and single lanes width is 11 meters. And the typical span is 44 meters. The bridge is a multi-span structure of pre-stressed concrete box girder with constant section. And there are four kinds of spans which are 44 meters. 41 meters, 47 meters, and 50 meters. The main bridge will be constructed span by span with span segmental method erected by launching gantry from Pier WSN5 to Pier M112. Totally four gantries will be used for deck erection in which two of them will start work from Pier WSN5, M1, and the other two launching gantries will start work from M111, M112. Then all launching gantries will move from both ends to the middle of the bridge. Finally, 111 spans of deck will be erected. External Cable OVM external cable used in this project consists of 19 phi 
15.24 mm bare strand, whose elastic modulus is EP equals 1.95 by 105 megapascal, and the standard strength is FPK equals 1860 megapascal. The anchorage type is OVM.T15 to 19. The deviator is of round pipe type. The external cable is sheathed with HDE pipe in which cement grouting to be filled and HDPE pipes will be connected by HDPE couplers. 18 external cable bundles are designed in each span in which two cables are reserved and other 16 cables will be installed and stressed while segments are being erected. Total 3,552 external cables weighing approximately 3,000 tons, are applied to Satter Bridge. Preparation for external cable installation. Set up a temporary platform for installing and stressing external cables. Lift coils of bare strands onto the deck by crane of launching gantry. Put the coils into the decoiler and get ready for strand pushing. Put the strand pusher in front of the forwarding direction of launching gantry. Install a curved steel tube and its auxiliary support. Installation of HDPE pipe. When segments of a single span are erected, welding of HDPE pipes should be carried out at the same time. After the assembly of all segments, Install the HDPE pipes in the box girder. A piece of HDPE pipe should be welded with HDPE liner first, then put through the bearing plate and connected to the other HDPE pipes with HDPE coupler. Installation of strand. Connect the curved steel tube to strand pusher. Pull out the head of strand from the coil, then running in the duct. Put the strand pusher in front of external cable, which to be installed. Fix a casing guide to the head of strand. Start the strand pusher till the head of strand comes out from the other end of external cable. Cut off the strand with wheel cutter at the mark point. Multi-strand stressing. Multi-strand jacks are used for multi-strand stressing. Anchor head, jack, tool anchor shall be installed in such a manner that fit tightly with shafts. The external cable should be stressed from both ends synchronously. The tensioning procedure is 0 to 15% delta control, to 30% delta control, to 100% delta control. Set anchor after holding load for 2 minutes. After stressing, remove temporary hanger rods of segments and move the launching gantry forward to the next span. Then prepare for grouting of external cables. Duck grouting. Use a portable cutter to cut off the excessive strand out of anchor head at both ends of external cable. Only 30 millimeters long strand will be left out of anchor head. Spray a thin layer of grease on the inner surface of protection cap, then install the cap. Clean up the grouting holes of anchor plates. Connect grouting machine, hoses, and other components needed for grouting. High-speed mixer and UB3 grouting pump are used for duct grouting. It is preferred to grout the upper duct first. By now, one single cycle of external cable installation for one span is finished. OVM is a system. I guess from these two videos, you understood the concept of pre-stressing and uh, post-tensioning. So let us move to stage of loading. The analysis of pre-stress members can be different for the different stages of loading. 
the stages of loading are as follows uh, loading has uh, three different stages that is initial intermediate and the final stage in the initial stage um, in this stage again we have a uh, two more uh, sub stages that is during tensioning of steel the second one is at transfer uh, transfer of pre stress to concrete the first stage is all about pre stressing is done in this stage during tensioning of uh, steel in the sense pre stressing is done in this stage and the second one is in this stage the concrete is poured after pre stressing so it is transfer stage always remember in problem we come across this condition that is transfer stage that means only pre stress will be there and uh, 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 yeah pre stress along with the dead load dead load in the sense due to concrete or due to the member itself dead load will be there and pre stress will be there for this condition the next one is intermediate uh this uh, is this includes the loads during transportation of the pre stress member that means what initially we will pre stress uh, pre stress the steel then we will pour the concrete and uh, in the second stage but in the intermediate stage what we do is uh, already casting have been done in the site but we need to erect it in the site so what we will do we will just take this uh, casted members to the site where it has to be erected to do this what we do is we will take and uh, um, like um, it should be transported the members should be transported from the casted site to the erected site during this transportation or in between this transportation there may be a vibration occurs on this member while uh, transporting so that is nothing but your intermediate stage and the third stage is the final one in this again in the final stage we have two sub stages that is at service at ultimate at sorry at service means during the operation that means in the sense where member is already erected uh, it has completely placed in the site and it is ready to use but in the service stage what will happen is we will get a moving load load will be coming on this uh, case in this case so uh, that is called as at service during operation but the second one is at ultimate at ultimate in the sense during uh, extreme events like sudden earthquake sudden vibration that is ultimate stage service stage is normal where loads will be coming regular loads will be coming on the uh, member but ultimate is it is unexpected we have not expected uh, that uh, um, that uh, like earthquake vibrations and all so that comes under the ultimate and the, the ultimate comes under your final stage okay uh, the next is advantages of pre stressing and limitation of pre stressing first the advantage of this pre stressing is section remains uncracked during service load as i told during the service load moving load will be coming on the or live load will be coming on the members even though the live load is coming moving loads are coming uh, the members remain uncracked there is no crack in that and the next one is high span to depth ratio we can increase the span along with that we can increase the depth also so that is one point and you know that it is very economical uh, like to use a pre stress member it is very economical where 
long bridges are there for long span construction this is very economical the third point is suitable for precast construction if we want a precast construction so it is very much suitable next is comes uh, limitation of pre stressing what is the limitation is uh, pre stressing needs skilled technology uh, hence it is not as common as reinforced concrete you have observed it um, while constructing a reinforced concrete structures many mason labor everyone have a idea about it and they will try to construct easily so they uh, don't need any particular skill uh, for constructing uh, reinforced concrete but the thing is here in pre stressed members we required a skilled labors that is skilled technology skilled method yes required so skilled labors are very much important uh, while conducting or uh, while casting the pre stressed members that is important the next one is the use of high strength material is costly uh, usually the initial investment and the cost for those uh, high strength materials and all it is very costly in this process uh, so it is uh, said that it as a costly one the next goes uh, uh, there is a additional cost in auxiliary equipments as i told equipments you have seen in the videos also to um, own that equipments and all investment is very much high so it is costly the last one is there is a need for quality control and inspection regular quality control should be done inspection should be done so those things should be taken care of the next one is types of pre stressing here we have external or internal pre stressing the second one is pre tensioning or post tensioning linear pre uh, stressing full limited or partial pre stressing biaxial uniaxial or multiaxial pre stressing see uh, in um, external or internal pre stressing by the word itself you can understand you can go for a uh, external pre stressing or internal pre stressing uh, pre tensioning and post tensioning you have watched the video i need not to explain but this linear pre stressing is nothing but gradually increased we will gradually increase the uh, stress while pre stressing it and the next one is full limited or partial pre stressing full pre stressing is you know that if we want to provide around 250 then we will fully provide that we will give a full um, that, that much stress will be given to it we don't vary it and all okay that is about it and the limited and the partial pre stressing is yes, we will like partially we will keep on increasing or we will cut it down like we will be having certain limitations so we will limit our uh, pre stressing values for that the last one is uniaxial uniaxial means only one side of the cable or tendon will be pre stress so that is a uh, uniaxial and the biaxial or multiaxial is by the name itself you can understand it is uh, many number of sides biaxial is two multiaxial is any number of sides can be many number of sides can be pre stressed so this comes under biaxial or multiaxial pre stressing okay the next one is the next one is all about the source of pre stressing forces uh, the source of pre stressing is hydraulic pre stressing electric pre stressing and mechanical pre stressing 
pre-stressing is done by hydraulic, electrical and mechanical pre-stressing. And here comes the analysis of pre-stressed members. Um, and basic assumption, please keep this word in mind, it is our basic assumption, we are assuming it only to analyze the member, actually it is not like that, but we are just assuming and we are going for a analysis purpose, okay. For analyzing it, what we have assumed is, we have assumed that the concrete is a homogeneous material. Concrete is a homogeneous material is the first assumption. The second one is within the range of working stress both concrete and steel behave elastically not withstanding the small amount of creep which occurs in both material under the uh, sustained loading. Here uh, what it means is both the steel and concrete behaves elastically. This is our assumption not withstanding the small amount of creep that is also one of the assumption. The third point is the plane section before bending is assumed to remain plane even after bending which implies a linear strain distribution across the depth of the members. Um, plane section before bending is assumed to remain plane even after bending means there is no bending it remains in a normal state and there is a linear strain distribution across the depth we are assuming like that. Uh, but generally what I want to say is, uh, okay, these are the assumption we will use it for analysis purpose, okay, fine. This is about the theory. The last slide is about concentric tendon and eccentric tendon. What is this concentric tendon is? You can see load is applied on the tendon, this is a tendon part, this is uh, on both the sides load are applied that is PP load is applied. This load and the tendon will be in a straight line, will be in a straight line. So this is called concentric tendon. Here E value will be 0. What is E is eccentricity. It is a difference, sorry, a distance between neutral axis and the center of the cable. Neutral axis will be here, even tendon is here, so E equal to 0 here, eccentricity will be 0 here. The next part is eccentric uh, tendon. Here you can clearly see the tendon is something like a trapezoidal shape, correct? So, here uh, neutral axis will be running in the center or above like that. So, we have a trapezoid shape here. So, distance between the neutral axis and this tendon, we have that value as E value. That is, as I told, it is a eccentric, eccentricity value. Here, one more thing you can observe. As you see here, the load is applied and it is directly implies to the tendon. Both will be in a same line. Load as well as tendon will be in the same line. But here if we apply a load also, tendon is not in a straight line. It is something like a trapezoid. So this is, uh, this is called as a eccentric tendon here E value that is eccentricity value will be there for concentric tendon E value will be 0 that is eccentricity will be 0. This is um, all about the theory part.